What's good, Win Comedy fans? Do Rag Sell here. Spin move. If I'm honest, I'm not 100% sure what to make of this episode. However, this is the a big lesson. And in some cases, honestly, a reminder. Now, this completely unexpected episode for where we left off from last week. I'm not 100% sure how we went from on the run for Lieutenant Tsunami to this, but at least it's not a big ass CGI bear this time, right? Or apparently a rape bear in the forest. No, oh, wait. That guy raped a bit. I didn't watch the OVA. Don't plan to. Sorry. But as I was saying, this episode, basically our boy Hita, Master Hita, his master had an ER on it, not an A, don't get me confused. Our boys and Asper roll up on his place, right? And this. Damn. Finally get back to Hokkaido, finally see Andrew people, and when we get to this guy, the first day, which is kind of a red flag, he freaking trips and almost falls off a mountain. Calling out to his family, who's not even real. Well, it was, but what I'm saying is Asuka and Sugimoto saved him, and that's how they met. By the way, did anybody notice when Asuka went over to save him, she is a child and too short, and Sugimoto pretty much had to save both of them. They didn't make it look like that, but when you looked at when they moved back up to show them both was Cash and Hita, you seen Sugimoto grabbing on Asuka, as if her whole body was off the edge. We could be e very eager to help folks, but this isn't my hero. Sacrificing yourself to save somebody doesn't mean somebody else is going to be there to save you at the same damn time. But basically, we get into the story where, honestly, in a way, it kind of reminds me of the snail conflict in Monogatari. For those who haven't seen the Monogatari spirit series, slight spoilers. But basically, there was a conflict there where our boy Araragi was dealing with Hachiki, the lost snail, and... Sijika Harbor was helping them out at the second half of that plot. However, Sijika Harbor was never able to see the snail because she wasn't lost from home. But Arari did not want to go home, so he was able to see Hashiki the whole time. It was an apparition. It was a curse. And how that relates to here is the whole time the two guys, the two people, his brother and his, his brother's wife, presumably, I don't know who that was at the point, she was over getting naked for folks. They were dead for a long time, but he was still hallucinating seeing them two this whole time. However, Sukimoto, Asuka, and the Escape King cannot. There's ever that one guy in the background where a lot of crazy stuff is going on and for a conflict that actually means a whole lot in hindsight. However, still does not give a fuck at the end of the day, just searching for money. Shibashi is that guy. We're only two episodes in from the comeback, but bruh, Escape King, dog, you're bumming out. Uh, speaking of old girl, I think her name was Nifuko. The only comic fan service is not having nothing. The problem I'm glad was, kind of glad it was just a hallucination, because first of all, Oh uh, man who can't speak, I forgot his name right now. First of all, you're supposed to be looking out for bears, so... You left your post, nigga? There was red flags over that one. I'm glad it didn't work out like that. The girl brought you into a secret hut to draw her, because she wanted to be drawn one. And even though this is going to comedy, we kind of saw kind of saw where the rest of that was going. She takes off her clothes and presumes to get naked, but she wants to be drawn. As she's still beautiful before she gets old. Then the other guy was a Taka, Taka, Nana, I don't know. He was irrelevant as hell. He's the guy that... <laughs> he pulls her out, they have a conversation, and then he just tongues her while he turns up in the tree doing the tongue motion, wishing that was his tongue in that girl's mouth. And then when his brother is eventually killed by the bear, the girl is traumatized and just shaking. He just goes to console her and then kisses her herself and goes for the titties. He said, I'm going to say this one time. Not only are you not Tanagawa. I had a cough, my bad. <laughs> I've been watching some of my videos back, and, well, and I found it very annoying when I was coughing on camera. So, yeah. Tanagaki, but I meant to say. Guys, I'm trying to make a joke, fan server joke, but Tanagaki was getting an ass where you make and this guy wasn't, but I fucked it up, so let's just move it on. Now, Astrofer was making the MVP of the episode. Because, you know, she being one of the Andrew people, or and, and one of the Andrew people, and she basically knows the stories, knows how things actually go down. She was able to detect the cap right from early on. Not to mention since her connection with the gold, the Andrew people's gold in the first place, she was already apprehensive of where this episode was going the entire time. She was able to see through Hita, and because he just, you know, going crazy right now, I don't want to say she was seeing through his lies, however, that's how she interpreted it at first because one, his story didn't match up with the actual legend, and two, these traps are kind of just hit, huh? Basically, she was able to find out this guy didn't see no freaking bear, and Here's the problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that scene that went down between Hita trying to grab some titties after people getting killed—that actually happened a long time ago, didn't it? I hate that. Um, bruh. 
I, I really don't even want to joke about it because this is like a situation like this. Well, this is definitely going to come and took it to extreme in the circumstances like this, but traumatized, being traumatized and having PTSD when you kind of relive old moments like this, this, this is a thing that happens to people. When tragic events happen, typically, yes, when murder is involved. Kind of leave a sour taste in your mouth for just even. Damn, I tried to put a sex joke in this damn review. Moving on, y'all. Shit. Basically, you know, he eventually turned into the wind comic himself and tried to attack Sugimoto. And, you know, Sugimoto was getting destroyed. He didn't take no actual substantial damage. And he didn't, of course, didn't die. But, bro, he was getting thrown around like a rag doll. Didn't even get, like, like I said, didn't even get hurt enough to get into a mortal Sugimoto mode. But, bro. Like, bro, like, all these considered. If you take into the account that Sugimoto didn't take that many wounds from this, this was out of his most not ready for a fight. Or, if the fact that he didn't take any actual damage doesn't apply here, this is the biggest ass woman he got. Yeah. Thank God this man was shot in the head two seasons ago. Yeah, funny reminder, Sugimoto's damn dead, brain dead himself. Burger in arms? I don't know. I said I was going to stop making jokes. When the eventual moment that, you know, he did, did fall, he did die, apparently Stick got his wish, we we heard a, the story from other characters, you know. Uh, this is honestly where it gets kind of great for me. Yeah, I, I don't really know what's happening right now. Because this guy, apparently he was in jail. Apparently he has the tattoos we're looking for. However, the other past story with his family getting killed by the wind comedy is real. He did indeed hunt for gold and platinum. And this is where it got him. And uh, part where these two stories connect. Unless it's actually a fact that these two guys are two different people just telling two different stories. Which also in a way makes sense because it's all crazy as fuck in the first place. It don't make no goddamn sense. Yeah, I don't know. Jade, help me out here. But the moment of reflecting this episode where, first off... As for pretty much said straight up how the stories didn't match and his downfall, while yes, he was being greedy and hunting for the gold in the first place, he did get the story right. Asper has been made a big deal of having the Andy stories properly passed down, properly passed on since we met her, let alone the first half of the season. Don't forget that movie episode. Asper had those shutter shades on. And also, Sugimoto basically was highlighting how hunting for gold like this, or any kind of riches whatsoever, what that can do to a person. Visualizing, you know, Ishikata, Sugatena Tsurumi, Ogata, and yeah. No shit, but I'm insane, huh? Point out the same people in Golden Conway. Alright then. Once again, our friend, the Escape King, basically just wants he to wants he to stay alive so he can tell them where the gold is so they can dig up another spot. However, notice when dude got naked, he had the tattoo still. So, our boy who was on lookout making up drawings, he was drawing the tattoos. Yeah, that's the weird thing about all this. Because on paper, really, if this derives away from the actual plot when it comes to the tattoo, movie, it feels like slick filler. However, we just got another tattoo. All of this crazy wild shit that most people wouldn't be able to comprehend, including myself, ended off with a W? This goes down to one of the most wild episodes of Gordon Conway. Maybe I do need to watch that over just to... Yeah, just tell me what happens. I know what happens, right? I need more dick in one minute this show. That's how I'm ending this. Write this video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to this movie. Mm-hmm.